Hi, I'm Callum, but you can call me the Casual Hammerer. So for today's video, we're going to talk about kit bashing and just customizing your models a bit using the spare bits that you'll just gather over time the more you get into this hobby. So as you can see, I've got my two newly built uh, Man Crusher Gargants here. I've used some extra bits from other kits on them here. And uh, I always try and do a bit of kit bashing on most of the kits I put together these days just because I can. Particularly with kits like the Mega uh, Mega Gargants and the Man Crusher Gargants, basically any big kit comes with a load of extra pieces. Um, Man Crusher one in particular comes with a bucket load uh, because it's two of the same model and that model is from Warhammer Fantasy so there's stuff like these bases that aren't used anymore that have bits that you can use elsewhere. Uh, so this is just going to be me organising all the bits that I've just clipped off the sprues into different piles for different usage. So the way I divide this up is there's um, unit specific ones, so like a man crusher head, that's only ever really going to go with another man crusher unless I make some sort of weird abomination. So that goes into a pile specifically for those units just in case they bring out another kit down the line or something like that. I want to use this head on that kit in the future. And then uh, more generic bits that I can use on any model going forward. So little things like this crow here, uh, vulture even, sorry. This isn't specific to the Man Crushers. It may come with the Man Crusher kit, but I can put this on pretty much any model I want and it wouldn't look weird and it wouldn't be out of scale. So that can go anywhere on any kit. So I can put that in its own pile there. And then there's uh, other bits as well, like this squished goblin down here that's really hard to pick up because he's quite flat. <laughs> Can't pick him up, there we go. Um, this one, because it's so flat and can't really go on anything else just because of the position, it's quite clearly it's been squished. It's trodden on, rolled over. I'm gonna put that in a pile for basing materials. And the same goes with these guys here. And then you're thinking, but Callum, how can you use these when the rectangular bases. Well, let me show you. I'll just go get it. Here's something I made earlier. So this is one of my vampire lords. It's a custom build one on a non-standard base, but I'm a narrative gamer, so screw competitive base sizes. As you can see here, I've chopped up one of those rectangular uh, man crusher bases and I've put that down as uh, just part of the general basing material and to make it sort of all cohesive in the end when I finish finally painting this thing. I'm just gonna put lots of sterling mud and just build it up around these bits of the base here and put bits on as well just to make it all look like one bit of ground and it should mix it up a bit more and adds detail to the ground of the base without having to do a lot of work myself. And this model itself is made from various different kits. So the base that's from the Man Crusher kit, the wolf is uh, a Space Wolves hero character I think it is got it cheap um, and all I had to do was fill in um, a couple of bits that were like sci-fi looking bolts you can see a little bit of one there but I sort of felt I could get away with keeping that one there and the main thing I had to do on the wolf to make it make sense there was a huge sort of uh, metal jewel thing here that looked very sci-fi so I just gradually chopped and filed that away so now it looks like more of an exposed bone and that's what I'm going to paint it as and I'm going to hide uh, the seams with a bit of gore and stuff ultimately and then as for the vampire uh, lord baroness whatever herself um she's uh, got the head from the uh, soul blight underworlds uh, box the body is the normal vampire lord body with the legs slightly repositioned so she fits on bits from four different kits put together to make a unique hero character for my army which is pretty sweet let's start dividing up these bits Yep, I've ended up with four piles of bits. I've got my basing specific materials here, man crusher specific bits that I, unless like I say, I make a huge abomination. These aren't really gonna fit with anything else. So it's gonna stick together in their own pool. Uh, these ones here are man crusher specific bits that could be repurposed into other bits. As you can see here, I've already chopped off top of this for something else. Uh, and like, again, they've got things like hands on, but I could always clip that off. And then you've got that bit of rock for something else. Uh, bits of hair like this are good for other big kits as well if you want to add some customization to them and like little things with the swords coming out here I'm sure I can come up with some cool scenery or something around that at some point and then finally the uh, biggest pile here are 
bits that um, are from the kit that can be used for pretty much anything. So these barrels are perfect, as are these cages, and there's a hanging skeleton in here as well somewhere. And there's like clubs made of statues, a stone disc thing, there's loads of things to use in here. And even these sort of um, front rag things that each of the gargants can have as an option. These are great to use on other kits as well. Don't necessarily need to be a front skirt. This could easily be repurposed into some sort of cloak for another character. Just have to think a bit outside the box. So yeah, that's uh, dividing up um, a, a big kit like this into its small bits. Um, and we'll finish up by sort of looking at the, the two mega gargants I built from this. So let's start off with this one because Despite him looking a bit different than a normal Gargan, all the bits on here have come from this kit itself. So standard build, because I, I don't like to repose and stuff, that's a lot of work. But the main difference here is the helmet here that I've given him. That's not in the kit. As you can see, that is the same uh, bit of plastic as the top of the club here. And I like the idea of he's uh, killed two of these things, turned one into a club and turned the other into a helmet. So he's got this bot bottom drawer bit, which is part of the kit. It has an option. And then the top, I, all I did was uh, hollowed out the, the top of the club, clipped off all the club bits, carved into it so I could fit the top of his head on. And it, it works really well, actually. I'm quite happy with that one. We've got the other one, which is, again, mainly bits from this kit. And the extra bits I've added on are just um, the shoulder bits here. So this is a uh, Stormcast Eternals um, shield. And here's a Iron Jewel shield that I had in my Iron Jewels bit. And just little stuff like that are great for characters like uh, Gargants and Mega Gargants because destruction in general actually is pretty good at just using the bits of other armies and just botting them on and it looking really good in the process. So yeah, a shield for one character is just a bit of shoulder armor for another. That's cool. And those are just like quick, simple kit bashing and conversions you can do. I mean, the thing that took the longest was sorting out the carving on the, the helmet here and hollowing out the eyes so you can see through it because I thought that would be a nice little touch. But I know that shows that he's done some work to it himself. Also from the kit, I decided to add these crows on his shoulders, sort of like he's a at one with nature hunter type character. So I really like how this guy's come together. Those are just like simple things you can do. There's more complex ones, which I'll go get an example of now. So yeah, we've got this one here, which uh, is uh, the other kit I made based on the conversion I did with the Wolf Vampire Lord. So this is the body of that Underworld's kit with the shoulders of the Vampire Lord and the head of the Vampire Lord kit on a heroic scene base. And she's come out really well. Possibly one of my favorites. She's my current Warlord for my Path to Glory army. And she's sweet as anything. This guy here is a, a mixture of Avircus Bloodborne and uh, again, part of that Soul Black Grave Lords uh, Warhammer Underworlds kit, the dude with the wings. Um, so this one, again, was probably my first touch at sort of hacking apart a model and adding extra bits to it. It's really hard to see because I'm not painting it. But, um, so yeah, I used uh, the legs of the vehicles, the torso and wings of the uh, Underworlds unit, and the head of the vehicles. And none of those bits fit together, and particularly the torso and legs of each are single pieces on both of the original models so i had to chop them in half and run them together but thankfully the vehicles have this sort of like fur on the lower half of the bodies so all i did was uh get some green stuff and uh, sort of mold it and shape it so it looked like that fur was just going a bit up the body a bit more he does look a bit hairier than your normal vehicles bloodborne and up close he looks a bit off but at a distance when you're holding on, on the table you can't tell the difference and uh he looks great and he's sort of the leader of that unit I have in my Tolbert Grave Lords army and he does pop up in my Cursed City games quite regularly. And then um, another good army to do these sort of um, quick and easy kit bashes with are the Gloomspike Gits. So I've got a bunch of Grots here. So the standard Grot kit for Gloomspike Gits is pretty bad in my opinion. They, they sort of have very static poses. They don't feel like they're pieced together from multiple bits as a lot of destruction armies do. So all I've done is taken the spare pieces I had from various different kits. So this head here is from the Squig kit. These are from the Boingrock Founders kit. This one here is just a hodgepodge of various different things. The base is um, got trick. The arm here, this arm guard is from um, a Angels unit can't even remember what this bit's from. I think that's from the, the Mangler Squig again, and just bits of armor and stuff. A Stormcast head there, that's from. 
an iron jaws kit i believe as well a head uh, from a different kit this is from the the squig riders kit so all pieced together to give myself a unique looking uh, loom boss also i delve into my box of old warhammer fantasy stuff occasionally and i had an old box of goblins and it had this uh, metal um sort of moon clan symbol here that was like a banner for that unit back in the day so all i've done is take that and coupled it with a boingo brown bounders leader um with their scythe on a normal grot body uh, from the old kit actually uh, you can see sort of what's that there and he's now a shaman for my glute spike gets he's a bit top heavy so i need to put a weight there eventually but just quick and easy to do just a couple bits of super glue and some plastic glue and that was it no extra work needed and then uh, another one on my mega gargant let me just reach over again my current painting project which is taking me forever to do uh, no major changes apart from he's got a couple of grots riding on his back um, so eventually I'm just going to add some like sort of like blood and soreness there and then that's what the idea and the grots are riding into battle and he's thematically tied into my blooms by gets army and then ultimately my mega gargan army when I get around to building that out as you can see so he's sort of been affected by the uh blooms by gets so he's got some mushrooms on his head here I've currently got them flesh colored I might change them up a little bit but i like the idea of mushrooms growing out of the flesh that's a very body horror thing uh, i like the gloom spot spike it so i added some more mushrooms on various bits of the body where they could fit and made sense sort of like where the light of the bad moon touches the body and thinking in terms of uh, stinky feet fungal infections he's got one there as well as if you're on the base just to time in with the rest of my gloom spike gets so yeah there's a really quick and simple um kit bashes this was just again had the mushrooms to spare so i just glued them on as i was building and i remembered i had these guys from the mangler squigs because i didn't use them in that build so i just chucked them on here instead just to show that i'm not completely an aos obsessed fanboy do have a warhammer 40k conversion here started doing them with my fledgling black templars army so the base model for this is the fancy uh, one you got from the GW web store for spending a certain amount of money in one month last year and all I've done is sort of taken that base model with all this nice little detail and battle damage that kind of built into it I'm really looking forward to painting and I've added some Black Templar bits from the new Black Templar kit um, that came out at the end of last year and the old um, Black Templar upgrade sprue from like the early 2000s I think it was that I had lying around so now I've got a unique Black Templar character that can add to my Black Templars force as I build that out and I'm really looking forward to painting this guy because he feels really cool and unique and the spike technically the model cost him here for £100 in the grand scheme of things I've lowered the value considerably in terms of monetary gain but increased it in terms of personal satisfaction and he looks like a badass everyone wants one of these guys right I can only make this one and he's mine forever you can't have him and I've got loads of other little bits like that. Like I said, I try and put something together with each and every kit I build just to differentiate whether mixing pieces, whether it makes sense or not. It just makes them feel a bit more unique to you and the army that you're building. So yeah, that's my approach to kit bashing and customizing models. And uh, yeah, it, I just find it really good fun, really rewarding part of the hobby. And it's something I've definitely got into more the past year, just sort of digging through my old sprues and just bits box, just adding stuff where and when possible that fits with the armies I'm building at the moment. Uh, a couple of caveats though, kit bashing is definitely a expensive sub niche of the niche that is Warhammer. To get the best results you're required to buy multiple kits. If you want to get a completely custom hero using Games Workshop products you're looking at probably buying two or three model kits just to build one unit which uh, adds up pretty quickly. Vampire Lord on the Wolf Mount that I made altogether cost me a good £60 to put together with the various bits but I mitigate the cost of that by using those kits multiple parts of those kits on different builds so i've spread the cost out and justified it to myself in that respect like most things in warhammer money is a big issue and those that can spend more tend to get the best stuff and uh, in particular if you're hunting down specific part or bits of units from bigger kits it can get expensive quickly even when you're looking at bit specific websites and stuff like ebay where people just sell the offcuts and stuff of this bruise that they have uh one key tip i'd sort of give to anybody looking at doing this is never throw away any old sprues or bits of sprues just clip them off put them in a bag or in a box and just leave them and then when you finally get that itch to try stuff out bring it out uh, sort it out on the on the desk here as you saw 
and then just experiment a bit before sort of throwing it all away or selling it on because uh, that's what I decided to start doing a few years ago so let's actually keep the bits build up a collection and then start uh, looking into customizing and kit bashing and it worked out really well for me and now I'm making some really cool stuff that's unique to me and the armies I'm building. The other thing as well is build multiple uh, armies if you can afford it obviously or if you've got friends that are building their armies at the same time and they're not into kit bashing just ask for their spare bits. Most people don't realize the value of the things that they have and you can get it off them for cheap if you're willing to pay for them or for free if you're willing to not tell them the value of the things that you're taking from them. And uh, otherwise, yeah, if you're looking at this from the point of view of selling stuff, look on eBay for the kits you have and see what parts people are buying or selling in that respect and sell away, be happy, make money, spend it on the kits you want. Uh, so yeah, well, once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any kit bashing ideas or stuff like that, please put it down in the comments below. And any questions on the ones I've made, I'm more than happy to answer. So thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.